And we're live. Hello, I'm Claire Bottrell and I'm delighted to be I have this opportunity to share lots of tips and ideas that I've developed over the years. Um, the initial um, image you have of the three poppy heads was exhibited in the Society of Graphic Arts exhibition two years ago in the Menya Gallery in Southwark. And I'm going to work from that inspiration, but what I've decided to do is just draw the one poppy head instead of the three to allow myself time to show you some other seed heads that we do like to work on. So I've started off with my uh, piece of paper and for compositional purposes, have a look where you want to put your image. So I'm just going to put a little mark there and a little mark there, just a practical way to keep yourself in proportion. And then I'm going to decide on the size of the poppy head. So I'm just going to put a couple of marks there and I'm going to do it rather larger than normal so it'll help you see how to do it. Okay, we've got this bit here and the poppy head I'm working from has got rather a curved stem. So I'm just going to straighten that out a little bit and <coughs> not do it straight along the picture. I'm going to do a slight diagonal which adds light to your picture. So really, it's really like doing dot to dot. So I'm just going to lightly sketch a line in. Now, what I like you to think about whenever you're doing flowers or anything that's growing is the life force that's going straight through that and think of where that would be growing right through there to get your balance. Rather, you know, just keep that flow round. So what I'm going to do is just, I do enjoy doing observational drawing. I really, really enjoy working from the plant. And that leaves me a lot of freedom to um, free up with the ink and the wax that I'm going to use after the initial drawing. Uh, you'll notice I'm drawing with a purple uh, pencil. And I've found that it's quite nice to use a watercolour paint pencil to do your uh, initial drawing because as you know when you draw with your um, graphite pencils it, it can leave your paper a little bit dirty for your watercolour um, paper. So I'm just going to demonstrate how nice this can, say you have done a sketch and you've got that purple on, you may want to rub it out which is fine but to leave it in your original um, Painting's quite nice because it becomes part of your painting and you get some nice marks left that lie underneath your painting. I just think it adds another dimension to your picture. Um, if you're doing a lot of green scenes, I would use a mid-green or a yeah, soft brown. It's, it's just another little tip to help you keep your painting looking nice. Okay, I'm really going to enjoy looking at this poppy head. And you've got this main bit here. So I'm looking at the structure of that. And the distance here, that bit there. And I'm also looking, imagine a poppy head to be round. And when you start really observing them, this one here, you can see it's flat along the bottom. So I'm just putting a little flat bit there. And because I've put these markers in, it's nice, it gives you direction. Um, it's like you're cross-referencing. Say like you're doing a portrait and um, you can cross-reference where the eye is in relation to the mouth. It helps keep you in control of your drawing. So I'm just doing a nice loose sketch around there. Now, I'm looking at that distance there, where the crown is, and I'm just going to put a mark there. And another important thing I've noticed with my students when they're drawing poppy heads, this distance here, across your crown, they often do it a little bit bigger. And it is rather nice, it's cupped in quite a bit. So I'm just seeing in relation how wide that might be. And there's a lovely slant there. See, this one isn't completely round. 
and then we've got a lovely slant on the other side another lovely tip for getting your angles right <clears throat> offer your pencil up to the angle and then bring it back to your drawing it's it's rough and it's loose but it's good enough for this sort of drawing and notice how that is not symmetrical here you know it's an organic uh, it's an organic thing so follow what it's telling you okay then let's look at the uh, width of this stem and the width here so put that there. I love this shape it's just so beautiful so we've got that it's like a head on the shoulders isn't it okay we've got that beautiful shape there and we've got another line there and then it swoops down a bit and then what I'm going to do is put the other side of the stem in now poppy stems are all a bit wavy and they go off at different angles Mind your head, please, thank you <laughs> I'm too busy concentrating <laughs> and then we'll do the other bit Okay, we've roughed out that shape. Now, a bit I really love and enjoy doing on poppy heads is um, these little bits here where the seeds are released. So I'm just going to put a little line in for the top of that like crown. That angle there, coming out quite a sharp angle. Um, now we've got some perspective on this globe shape here and the lines on the poppy head that are facing you there are not as curved as the ones where you're getting further out so giving the in, you know the impression that it's round That one's not, so see the ones in the middle aren't so curved. We just put them in as a suggestion. That bit there, that, that's accentuating that flat bit there, you see. And then it curves round. And then into there. Okay, <coughs> we have this bit here. And it always makes me think of a Roman aqueduct. <laughs> These lovely shapes. And although I like accurate drawing, I do like to accentuate things sometimes. Bring your attention to these things. Now, as we go round, those get a bit narrower because they're going out of your view. And another one there. And then there's another little part that's like this. And then we've got the main struts going out there. And we have those lovely shapes there. Okay, I'm just going to rub out this um, line that I put in for guidance. Another little tip with your rubbers, I often like to slice a bit off so I've got a nice point if I need to get into any corners. And I do a lot of teaching and a lot of workshops around the country and I say to my students I say I gain far more from you than you ever do from me I'm always picking up tips and being inspired by them and a lovely Czechoslovakian studio of mine she does this and I thought how elegant is that <laughs> to get rid of your bits off your paper it saves putting your greasy hand across your paper Let's really enjoy that bit. Now, these aren't all the same. 
<coughs> us as human beings, we so naturally go on automatic pilot. You see a line, you think it's that way, that way, when it might be a slight angle. It's like when we're painting, I'll say to my students, you're not emotioning in the kitchen wall. <laughs> Let the paint do it for you. Look at the irregularities that you see within nature. And this what gives a really nice authentic feeling to your picture. So that one's a bit shorter than that one. And then we've got some in the background, just one two sticking up, not too much. Okay, <coughs> I've done the initial drawing and now I'm going to use a Elegant Writer 2mm uh, ink pen and this is great fun. Um, so you've got your drawing. Often I find that um, with my students, um, fear is the big thing we suffer with. We do a beautiful drawing and then they're frightened to death to paint it because they don't want to ruin the lovely drawing. So I do encourage people to draw on cartridge paper and to put the heart and soul into it because they're not going to ruin it by painting that. It's a botanical tip of where they draw and then trace it and then put the image onto your watercolour paper. And I found it so good because it, uh, it takes away people's fear. They're not going to ruin the lovely drawing. And also the drawing's better because they're not holding back because they're afraid they're going to ruin it. And it's been really nice because they'll say, oh, that's great, I'm going to do it in another colour now or I'm going to paint it in acrylics next. And it's, it's really been so good and it's allowed people to develop and allowed them to take risks as well, and which you become more creative when you do that. Okay, this has got a chisel end and I'll be using the fine bit as well as the broad bit. And I'll be following my careful drawing. My careful drawing is like the skeleton I'm going to hang everything else on. But there'll be times when I start freeing up and scribbling and having a bit of fun. Um, so, I like to do a nice loose line, loose sketchy line so it looks nice and relaxed. See there's a bit more dark there, so I'm just putting that in with the ink. And then Slide your head please. So notice that I'm not doing a harsh end to that and I'll rub that line out there. See how you can loosen up once you've got your drawing in place. You don't have to ink every line. You can just accentuate the ones you want. So I'm letting that disappear a little bit there. Putting a bit of cross hatching in there. Okay, my Roman aqueduct. And then we can perhaps do a few little bits there. So there's something going on, the seeds, perhaps some little bugs. I 
think that's enough for that. These are very powerful and there's a lot of colour that comes out of these. Um, so these, I'm going to use a wax resist sticks that tends to be used with the brush shows. And what the wax will do, it is going to waterproof where I put it. So when I put it over the ink, that will stay really powerful and strong because it's waterproof in it. And where it's not on the ink, the ink will run and become more subtle. And it's not always controllable, but I find that the fun bit. So what I'm going to do is um, put the uh, wax on. Now, the paper I'm using is a Bockingford 425, which I stretch. I like a good heavyweight paper, and it's, um, it's not. So it's got just a nice texture to it. So I'm just going to put <coughs> the wax on the highlight. I will say the white wax, you can't see where you're putting it at first. And it does take a little bit of an experience to know where you're putting it. If you hold it up to the light, you can see it shine on the paper. You can see where you have put it. But when you're putting it on, you don't see the actual strokes. Now we've got a nice bit of light there, so I'm putting that in for the light. And I'm going to put some just on that ridge there, catching the light. And coming down from there. And I'm not going to put much on the underneath at all because that's rather dark. Now I do like to preserve this pattern here. So I'm putting some wax on there. And just a bit up there. And we'll put a few little spots of wax in, rather like a negative shape within the darkness. Okay. I'm not going to worry about this one in the background too much. I might let the watercolour do that. Um, so, what to do now, I've got a nice big... 16 brush and I'm going to wet all the way round and not touch the ink just yet. So you've got a nice reservoir of water for your colour to bleed in so you get nice soft edges. So just take your time and do that and then I'll use another brush and we'll go in and touch the ink and see what it, it's going to do for us. So just lay your water on. A good tip is to have your wash made up before you put your wet on. And the wash I have here is Indigo, the SAA Indigo, which goes very well with the ink colour. This ink is very powerful. Uh, you may not always need to put a colour on, but I'm going to show you for this exercise. I'm going to have some dark at the bottom to give some weight to the picture. Thinking of having light at the top and airy with the seeds blowing out. Although I'm painting it sideways, this will be presented in a portrait um, fashion. Okay, now this is where the fun begins. Remember those magic painting books you had as a child? <laughs> I loved them, but I thought, the colours aren't strong enough. I want something a bit bolder. So you've got a nice reservoir here. Okay. And I'm going to use the number 12. I tend to use a 12 for most of my painting. It holds water and it's got a nice point on it. And I find it 
it just suits me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to work into this and touch in on that ink. And I'm not going to touch all of it, I'll leave some white areas. And what I'm going to suggest here is if you're doing the end of a stem coming down to a picture, you may not always want it like you're cutting the stem off at the bottom of your picture. So this is a nice way to fade your stem out towards the bottom of your composition. Right, I'm just going to put some over this wax. Now, the texture here is beautiful. The colour's running in to the texture with the wax. And I'm going to leave them white bits because that's going to be interesting. And let's just drop that in there. <laughs> I'm going to let that run out from there. I'm leaving some white bits deliberately there. Let's wash over that. Let's leave in those lovely definite patterns within there. This is such fun. It's so lovely. It's a very forgiving way to paint watercolours. I find when I teach it, it really helps liberate people. Okay, we'll have that there. So, that's basically that with the ink. I'll show you putting a wash. Right, a tip, always have some scrap paper. If you're painting in oils, acrylics, any medium, test, your, test the intensity and the colour before you put it on your um, picture because it can look very different from the palette. I'm just getting this to the right consistency. Another thing, <laughs> I really hate putting a loaded brush full of colour in my water pot. <laughs> what a waste so we use the dropper to add some more liquid to it now I'm hoping Gary doesn't mind but I'm just going to turn this round portrait to show a bit of a wash there Go for it. so put it in the middle there it's in the middle I just need to have it running down Drop some more water in and have the dark coming up. Slight diagonal gives life to the picture rather than a flat horizontal line. And we'll just pop a bit in there as well. Now at this stage, you've just got to have some face and let it do it for you and try not to fiddle. Put it to, side, to one side and just leave it for a bit because you can always come back and put another wash on it and uh, add more to it if need be. So don't panic once you get to this stage. So Gary, I'm just going to put this to one side to dry now, okay? Should we have a break? Yes, yeah, it's great. Let us bring out the artist in you. If you'd like to learn how to paint or improve your painting, the SAA, Society for All Artists, is here to inform, encourage and inspire you every step of the way. When you become an SAA member, you get so many benefits including the free bi-monthly newsletter Paint, packed with inspiring step-by-step -step projects, fascinating articles, and detailed information to get your creative juices flowing. Discounts on over 13,000 art products featured on the SAA website and in the Home Shop catalogue, with free order line and free delivery in the UK mainland, 
a devoted SAA team on hand to answer your questions and give you the confidence and motivation you need to start painting and develop at a pace that suits you. Plus, a free welcome pack filled with gifts and practical help to get you started, as well as the opportunity to make friends with like-minded people. The best thing to be a that member is, is the inspiration from the magazines, to be able to purchase things at a very reasonable price. Yeah, you get the um, reduction on all the materials, the uh, advice you get. I can shop from home. It's a community. It seemed like a, a very friendly sort of organisation. If somebody's thinking of joining, don't spend too long thinking. Just join. They'll love it. Hello again. <laughs> um, we did the poppy head, quite careful drawing. Um, this is another seed head that's very popular to do. It's a beautiful sculptural subject. I'm going to do this a little bit more loose with the drawing. Now, you'll understand I've done a different composition here because I like this shape within here. It's, it's something just a little bit different. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at where my stem is. That's so about a third of the way up, but because this is here, and I'm doing it on this piece of paper, I can do it life size. So I'm just going to bring the stem in and then say, look where that is, which is about just under a third of the way in. <coughs> and then look at the height of where that one is, this one here. And then where that one is there, how far? That's about a third in and that far up. So I've got my structure before I start. Okay, so we've got the lock around bit there. So we've got a lovely bit here, the way they join. Uh, use the natural curve of your arm. Do anything you can to make life easier for you. So that comes straight out and then curls up at the end. And then we've got another one that's come in there, seed head there. So straight out, curve at the end. I'm not going to draw every stem, um, <coughs> just the main ones. So this one is more, it's more of a, an acute sort of angle there. And we've got this bit here. So I'm just putting a little sketch to show where the seed heads are. Right, I've got another one at that angle, so I'm checking my angle again. Okay, I've just put an indication where the other seed heads are and this bit here, shorter there, you've got these really nice shaped seed heads and what I like to do with this sort of drawing is draw a couple really careful in the foreground. There's one at a lovely angle, coming in at a lovely angle, and then that one straight up. And I'm going to do the same with this one, one at an angle. And once you've observed a couple of them, uh, and that's a side on one, you can start seeing how the pattern is. So that's coming up there. Oh, I've got a lovely one showing foreshortening here. That's sitting there. And the stem's coming round like that. Beautiful. Okay, got a seed head there. And then you can see more or less the top of the bunch there. And they've got quite a few points on that one. Round like that. Okay, I'm only going to draw that amount of detail in here. I'm going to show you um, the technique again and how you can free up and scribble once you've got the character of the plant. Okay, beautiful stem, lots of lines in it. This can go right to the edge if you want to, though it's going out the picture. No, 
now, well, while they are now, we can just do a bit of scribble <coughs> to um, give the effect that those seed heads are in the background. And then this one, lovely bit drawn out there. Sideways one, another one at an angle. That one's coming in a bit. It's like a bunch of heads in a crowd behind it. coming from that's coming from there and then we've got this lovely bit where there's all these bits of base a bit longer than the rest. I find when you're observing these, you keep looking thinking, that's so beautiful, that's so beautiful, you know, you think, ooh, <laughs> you really want to do everything. So what I'm going to do is just put a suggestion now of these. And I'm just going to, because there's a couple more seed heads I'd like to show you if I have time. Uh, and I'm just going to show you, I'm not going to put too much in there now, but you've got the gist that you can scribble in the background. But I'm going to show you another way of showing the background with your watercolour. I'll do for now. <coughs> okay. Make sure it's dry. Yeah, it's fine. Put some wax on. And I'm just scribbling the wax really freely. And this is what helps you loosen up. You've got your good drawing underneath. You've got your structure. And I'm going to put a couple of wax ones in. And they're showing the ones where the light's catching them. Very good for doing uh, ship's masts as well. Because when you look at a ship's mast it's, or, or the rigging, very often you'll see a dark bit and then the light's shining on it. So it varies. It's not just a distinct black line a lot of the time. And it's a lovely way to do that. In fact, it's a lovely way to do everything. It's such a lovely technique. You can do any subject you like. It's something I developed back in the 70s when I first learnt to do watercolour painting. I uh, went through traditional art school <laughs> and they didn't teach you pure watercolours then. It wasn't the fashion. And I was doing my first year degree in ceramics and my friend had a little bijou box. When I saw these colours, being as old potter as well, I love the texture of the paper. And when somebody showed me how to put candle wax on the distance, put a wash of colour on and, and the way it shimmered with light. Oh. And I thought, oh, I really like this. And I love nice pens as well. And so I'd use some wax crayons and I thought, I fancy using that bright green. I fancy using that pink. <laughs> and so I used all the colours and um, it's just such a lovely way to paint. And I've painted like this all my life as well as I've taught a lot of art in a lot of different places. And so I use all um, materials, but this is just something that's developed with me. Right, I'll put a few little flicks. When you're doing this sort of thing, I'm talking about automatic pilot again. Try to look and think, well, we're not going to have it evenly all the way down. Just, just do a little area. You need like open 
uh, areas where there is nothing, your negative shapes, to appreciate your positive shapes. And you find anyone who is new to painting probably try and fills everything up when there's no need. I'm going to let this go outside so when you crop that can go outside that side of the picture. Okay then, back to the water. Now, I'm hoping Gary's going to allow me time to show you the honesty. <laughs> Am I being cheeky here? No, it's fine. <laughs> because it's such a nice, it doesn't take long, but it's just such a lovely thing to do. Okay, we've got the wash on. Mind your head. Thank you. Okay, let's just... Give some depth there, just touch a little bit there, we'll leave that there. Let's just see, let's just see if... Look, here's your lovely white shadows coming through with the wax. I'm going to be a bit more liberal with this. Just let it do things. And if I feel, oh yeah, if I feel like we need any more, like dark there, in goes the paint. So let's just see they're the ones in the shadow at the background. To give the impression. There were no need to draw all those, were there? The materials do the work for you. So let's, I'm really going to drop some powerful bits of colour in there to give a lot of drama. I think we'll have the colour coming out there. I think we'll have a bit down there as well. Also, where the join, you often get a lot of dark in the, in the uh, centre as well. You'll probably think you've lost a lot of your um, draw in there, but as it dries, the ink lines will come through again. And I'd like to just show you quickly um, an honesty seed head that's very popular. And it's just a very nice one to do, very simple, very quick. Um, yeah, honesty. Now that's how it comes with the two, uh, you know, the seed. And if you take the seed, you can see there's three seeds that side, and three seeds in the other side. And very often when we do a workshop with the seed heads, people like to paint that lovely purple, with purple and yellow ochre, but this is the fun bit using the wax resist for the actual seed head. Okay, so we've got this, oh, they, they look so indistinct, but they are so lovely. So what I'm going to do is I'm looking at the angle of which that one's facing, so I'm popping that there, there and there, and the point's going to go there. And then we've got that lovely um, stem, so that's going to go down there and it's got that lovely little joint there. These are very subtle things that you think, hmm, does it matter that much? But it's what really tells the character of the plant. So I'm just going to roughly put a shape in, a bit narrower there. There's a lovely shape there. And what they have, they have this little line that goes up with a little dot on. And there, there, there. They all vary. So look at each one that you're doing. So there's my quick drawing. And nice loose ink. You find the more you do, I mean, the more you free up with it. Nice loose lines. That lovely point. I've exaggerated it. Made it more dramatic than it is. bit there. Okay. Right. We'll make that a bit stronger because that is a, a good stem coming out there. Okay. 
three seeds. <laughs> there we go. Put your seeds, there's the silver bit where your seeds sit. And I find the more relaxed I get and the more scruffier I get, the better the picture is. Is that our time now, Gary? We're, we're pretty close. So, there's your seed heads and how to enjoy them and how simple it is. And we'll see how the poppy head was drying. Here we go, got a lovely big cauliflower, who cares, <laughs> you've got your ink that's run, it's become quite magical there, but if you feel like you've lost some of your um, strong lines, some of your nice drawing you'd like to put back in, your pen doesn't go very well on your wax, but you can use a black biro just for tiny little bits, I don't really particularly want to put biro on my pictures, but I find it useful. Now I was saying to you about this wash and if you feel like it's not gone as you want, I'm just going to put some wet there. You can lay another layer of water on. Like I say, this is very forgiving, this uh, technique, where sometimes you can be a bit anxious with pure watercolour. I love pure watercolour, but I understand how a learner feels when they're dealing with it you know, when it, they feel a bit out of control. Okay, I'm just going to put that in there and then we'll put a bit more of this dark in. And we might get rid of that cauliflower. There we go. Look how that dark, that lovely contrast. Don't be afraid of putting dark in your picture. It gives real drama. And remember, when you put your paint on, it'll look you know, I know my students, they dab it off quick because it scares them. But it will dry considerably lighter. So that is something I wouldn't worry about. Because if it does dry too dark, you can take it off when it's dry. I'm just going to mop this up. See? No worries. So, okay then, Gary? If I've done enough for you? Yeah, <laughs> Thank the lovely people at home for watching. Thank you very much. I love teaching this. It's great fun. And I've, you know, I feel honoured that I've had this opportunity. Thank you. Hi, I'm Vic Bearcroft. I've created my half of the postcard and now I'm going to pass it on to my painting partner. What have you got for me, Vic? Half a skull. What are you trying to say to me, Vic? Are you calling me an old fossil? Okay, let's see what we can do with it.